is there waiting to guide us through what happens next. Good morning, Peter. I hope you got your ear defenders in. Good morning. I'm going to stand out of the way. I think we're about to see the shot. amazing sight that was. That's uh, more than four decades worth of British industrial history which has come to the ground in just five five seconds essentially. Uh, let me bring in bring in Tony. Uh, Tony, can I have a, have a chat to you? Yes. Tony, you, you worked right behind us at the blast furnace for, for more than 30 years. Your, your thoughts on, on, on what we've just seen? End of an era. Um, start of a new one I think. Um, yeah, certainly change of the skyline coming to work I mean I just work in the distance there so I see that every morning when I drive past it so yeah certainly different um, mixed emotions I think do you remember the, the first time you, you saw it because it's an iconic it's an iconic or it was an iconic landmark on the, on the Teesside skyline wasn't it well, at 84 when I started there it was just come out of my time and I was working as an, a, a fit which is already down uh, worked my way through, up in through the management, and eventually I was a production manager at Wrecker Blast Furnace. Um, meet lots and lots of friends there, they like family. Met my wife there in um, just two weeks ago, it was our 24th wedding anniversary, so... Congratulations. It's, uh, she'll certainly be shedding a tear. And, and tell, us, tell us what you did, and I should, I should point out, because obviously the, the, the blast furnace has come down now, that the, the, the four stoves are remaining standing, and that is, that is purposeful. <laughs> it isn't something that's gone wrong with the demolition this morning. Those are coming down in about a month or so. Tell us what, what you did at, at the furnace. Um, well, I was an ancillaries manager, so I looked after all the peripheral stuff for a while, then I was a cast house floor manager, so I actually looked after all the tap holes and the troughs, the bolt and iron, and all the nice, the nice hot stuff. Um, and then production manager when we were relighting it and fetching it back online. So it's gone through lots of changes and stuff, nothing as drastic as this one, but uh, hopefully it's opened the way. And we know that obviously it's had a relatively difficult recent past in that it was mothballed and then yeah. reopened again. You were involved in, in, in that process. So it, it's a bit of a strange moment that it has now gone forever now. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, 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 it's drawn a line under it all and actually finished it all but uh, yeah you're right went through the mothball stuck with it when we were mothballing I just moved over into the, the buildings here in, in, in the so I really moved far away from it like, even now I'm at RBT just in the distance there so if it near enough I think we can. I think we can have a watch. We're gonna the guys in back in the studio and 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 up. Little bit of trouble on the sound there, but no bother for the demolition experts this no, morning. No question. What happened with that? Yeah. The, and it went a little bit earlier than we yeah, expected. Yeah, we were expecting nine o'clock, and it was about it's about thirty seconds early. But Peter Roddick was cool as a cucumber, wasn't totally. he? Totally. Just of steps out the side. Yeah. No dramas, but look at that, uh, the dust still hanging in the air this morning. The end of an era in Redka, all those jobs that have come and gone over the decades, uh, but also people talking about the future and what can now happen potentially on that site uh, as, uh, as the town tries to, to reinvent itself and its economy. Three minutes past nine, let's go to Carol, who has the weather for us today. Morning, Carol. Good morning, Jim. You saw how wet it was in Redcar. We've got heavy rain pushing.